All right, guys, welcome back. This is Survival Living, formerly CFP. Uh, we did have to make a name change, guys, because we are not in Central Florida, and I just did not want to be centralized in one area. Um, today, we're going to work on squirrel traps, one of the very simple ones to use using uh, snare wire. All right, now you can use all kinds of different wires. I found for cost effectiveness and works very well is actually the Dollar Tree. Okay, you get four different four different sets. Um, you get your two bears, you got a red plastic coat, and then you got a black plastic coat. Now these are 30 some feet each. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna run our snares up in this tree. Alright, now I'm gonna show you how to run a pole snare very simple squirrels are not the smartest creatures out there they're a creature of habit okay I'm not saying they're stupid or anything like that but squirrels are a little slow now I will not be showing any kills or anything like that on this channel the platform does not fare very well to a YouTube creator showing f stuff like that so guys I'm just gonna show you the basics on how and since I do not have hunting license here in the state of Florida, I'm pretty sure you have to have trapping license too. I could be wrong on that, guys. But because I don't have any of those, I'm not going to be running these snares to actually catch anything. I'm just going to show you how to set them up. Um, basically, though, survival situation, you're going to be using them. You know, especially if you don't have anything. I always keep snare wire in my bug out bags so that way I can always run my snares so let's go ahead and get started guys all right guys so we went around the trunk and I just twisted this all the way down just to cinch it up okay now when I did the loop here I gave it a little slack enough room to play with okay squirrels are not that strong and I cinched it down back here and I pinched this end up that way I had more control of that all right so now I can move that a little tighter if I want to and reposition now what you do is you put your bait here and here to smear it in okay when they go running through this this is what the issue is they'll run through this and get hooked up okay that's that they get hooked up, they dangle, and that's what ends them. All right, that simple dangle. Now you can use wire. I mean, you can use wire. You can use rope. Rope works very well too. The only thing about rope is that it can be chewed through. Now, if you uh, hook up and catch anything mid-body, okay. So we get mid-body in here, and he goes to dangle. He can still use access, all right? He can move around. He can get hold of your wire. He can get hold of your rope. You want just a little bit so he dangles. And the interesting thing is, I got my hand stuck, so I'm going to have to leave that here while we're filming. So I can't undo it by one hand. Um, well, it's something I've always seen out in the woods. I'll have a couple of them dangling, all right? For some reason, as long as they fall off, Squirrels will keep running up and down this thing, no problem at all, while their buddies are still dangling. Now, is it a cruel way to die? Probably. Okay, guys, uh, let's do a little slower, a little bit more close up and move the camera around for you guys. Pull your section off. If it's too long, it's just too long. I'd rather have it too long than too short. Kind of measure it out. Uh, that's good enough right there. piece off that's not a leatherman that is a great great neck that is a generic one it is nowhere close to being as good as a leatherman now this trunk of a tree which I'm going to call a branch but it's not has a drop off on this side so I'm going to tie mine up like this over here so that I position my 
noose over here on this side. There we go. A little bit higher up here for you. Doesn't have to be perfect back here. You're just securing it. Now, if you've got nails and things like that, you could uh, secure it directly to the tree so it won't slide, all that good stuff. It's not really going to go anywhere. I mean, it's just going to go all the way up or all the way down. All right, now for the snare part. Bend over. Just like that. Give yourself, I don't know, a good half inch loop. Run your... Uh, wire down so it doesn't slide out doesn't unravel which the squirrel does not weigh that much it won't unravel but you can put whatever type of knot you want to in this thing since it's wired it up pretty good just loop it around a couple times now you pinch that loop just to hold it better in place all right Then you'll just position it just like that. You put your bait before and after. All right, so whichever way he's coming, he'll sit there messing around with that bait for a while, and then he'll go to the next one because now he's all amped up. After getting some bait, he's gonna go for the other one, and that's where he gets him. All right, once he gets him, he'll struggle and then he'll lose his footing and then he'll dangle, and that's where it ends for him. Very simple. Now, when you do these guys set you up several okay set you up some here set some up off the side here because i've seen squirrel run up the back side you see them all the time at the back side of trees run you there run you another one up here a couple feet run you a couple up here sorry guys my microphone was all bounced around run you some up here run it all the way out you can run them up in the tree if you want just don't run it up too high up in the tree where you're gonna have to go climb basically because in a survival situation, you don't want to be falling out of a tree. All right, you get busted a leg or something like that, you just hurt your chances a lot more. All right, so work safe, work smart. Try to do your snares and traps on ground. It's a lot easier for you. So yeah, very simple, easy to do. All right, again, guys, like I said, you can use any type of snare wire. This is tool bench hardware, okay? They sell at the Dollar Tree. It works very well. It's stout enough to definitely take on a squirrel, no problem. It's very lightweight. You can move it around quite a bit before the wire breaks as far as uh, trying to get it right. I usually just take a pair of pliers and get a more direct pinch on it. But it won't pinch off by hand. So yeah, it's not bad for a buck. Get um, four rolls at 33 feet. Not too bad. And like I said, I only use the red for the demonstration. My experience using this stuff, guys, I've had better turnout with the bare metal spool than with that plastic coating spool. All right. I'm guessing they can smell that plastic, and that's why they've been staying away from it. I've had better luck using this, and it does come with two of those at your Dollar Tree. Uh, but it makes for a good cinching wire and stuff like that in survival situations. I mean, you can make cordage up using your inners of tree bark, um, vines, things like that. But your success rate goes down with your traps, okay? Cordage, homemade cordage and stuff you make out outdoors. Uh, eventually it starts getting stiff, brittle, the lifespan is not as long. I do like the wire, it's easy to put in place. Anyway guys, so we are still going to continue playing around with the intros and stuff like that. Um, definitely appreciate the feedback, a lot of people did not like the jaw harp. Uh, by the way, that was my brother playing it, he's actually pretty good, he plays all kind of stuff with that thing. He's got the musical talent of the family, he plays guitar, drums, you name it. I don't. I can play the radio. <laughs> but, yeah, we'll, we'll still be bouncing around playing with that, guys. See uh, what works, what doesn't. 
and uh, we'll continue doing videos like this. I've, I've got a lot more videos to do. I've got several more uh, snares and traps to set and do videos on that, walkthroughs on that. A lot of these videos you probably already know how to do. Uh, there's a lot of bushcraft people in our community. Um, a lot of people that are just preppers read up a lot on it. Uh, I did get a comment uh, by one of our subscribers. They uh, had never actually done the traps, but they got the literature on it, which is always, I always say, get literature. Everybody needs to get literature. All right. Having a book on traps and snares is going to be worth a lot in your bug out bag if you're out in the woods. Definitely try to make some time to tinker around with it while you can, when your life really doesn't depend on it. Because these traps. This one here is a very simple one, um, like the uh, figure four <coughs> deadfall. Once you get used to it, it puts together real easy. When you first start, trying to keep your uh, notches correct can be a little finicky at first. But once you've done it a little bit, and it really doesn't take that much, about four or five times, you're an expert at it. So, just work on it, guys. Uh, it's not it's not hard to do. I mean. If, my dumb country self can figure it out. Anybody can. But anyway, guys, um, probably the best advice I can say about setting traps and snares, try to keep your scent away from it. All right. Obviously, touching it is going to produce scent. Having peanut butter to smear will overpower a lot of your scent, and it just drives animals crazy. I don't know. They just love peanut butter just like we do. And once they start getting a little bit, and I don't mean to leave chunks of it, I mean smear it on real good just look so that the scent's there, that's what drives them nuts. And they won't think about safety, they'll keep going and keep trying to get the stuff. Um, don't urinate and stuff like that around your traps. The best thing to do is set your traps and stuff a good distance from where you are camped at. Uh, animals will pick up on your scent real quick out in the woods. Alright, I'm not in the woods, I'm in the field behind the house there. Um... But even here, I've got possum and everything that runs up here. I've been tracking the last couple of days. They've been coming through out of the wooded section out there. We've got a creek down there somewhere. And uh, when it overfills, it floods up this backyard. So I'm going to get out there and mess around. Hopefully not get on a water moccasins. But, um, yeah, you know, hopefully everyone's enjoying how this channel is directed towards. Now, we are still going to be doing our homestead videos and stuff like that when we get to Wyoming. Had a lot of questions on when we're going to get there. We're wintering out here. Um, this way I can get the suspension and everything set up better on that trailer. Same with the Tahoe. We just got a lot of stuff. I and mean, We gave away a lot of stuff, but we do have a lot. And it weighs a lot. And the fact is, I just don't want to be broke down the side of the road. Because like, I don't have AAA. I fix everything myself. Uh, I did have some comments about... I'm driving a Tahoe pulling a trailer. I don't have to pull in DOT stops. That is incorrect. When I was at the tag office getting my information, I actually asked. And they said in the state of Florida, and this is on the DOT website for Florida, personal vehicle, passenger vehicles that are towing a enclosed trailer longer than six foot has to stop in for the, to the way station. Now, most of the time, that is way beyond through. But if you got a truck squatting down in the back and you've got a trailer with its wheels all kicked out from overweight, they're going to weigh you. All right. So to avoid the ticket, because trust me, if you blow by one of these things and they stop you and they bring out those portable scales, they're going to find something wrong with your vehicle. You will be getting a ticket. So playing it on the safe side and try to obey the laws of the land while I can. Um, as much as I can. <laughs> I just pull into the stops. You know, coming up this way, we had three, and all three were closed. So, big man upstairs looking out for me because we were over, we were overweight. I mean, it's just too much. That tire was that the spindle's bent. It still is bent. I've got to order another one. So that's the plan. We're gonna order heavy duty ones and replace the ones that are on there. Then I'm going to swing another torsion axle, the same size, up underneath there, increase our weight capacity. I don't know about running brakes on it yet because I don't have a tow package set up on the Tahoe that I can take care of trailer weight. As long as I keep the same weight that we have, 
and just put a heavier axles underneath it will be fine I and mean, we're not going to be going through a lot of mountain terrain I'll make sure our trip is routed around the mountains because uh, pulling a trailer with no brakes down a mountain is not a good idea so we'll be routing away from it um, but anyway guys that's what's going on here I hope you enjoy the rest of your day we'll catch you later